Hello, it's Tom with Digital Foundry, bringing you a quick look at how Forza 6 Apex runs on budget PCs. Right away you can see our faithful Core i3-4130 rig paired with the GTX 750Ti on left and AMD's R7-360 on right. As ever, we're overclocking each card using MSI's Afterburner utility, so the 750Ti gets a core clock boost of 200MHz while memory is pushed up by 400 As for AMD, well the core clock there is again pushed to 1200MHz and memory up to 1800MHz. So to the tests, we're running each game at a fixed level of quality, forcing the game to run all settings at medium. The only exceptions here are of course the texture filtering, which we can afford to bump up to 16 times, and also particle effect resolution, which we leave on full. And as there's no way to specifically switch off MSAA, we're left on this dynamic setting for now. All of this avoids the dynamic scaling and quality that's set by default in the game. And the results? Well, the GTX 750Ti and R7 360 are each very close in this opening Rio stage. They do stutter on turns quite visibly, and approaching the busier areas at the city centre has each lurched down to around 50 FPS. But curiously, there's not a huge amount to tell the two apart at medium settings. For that, we have to push things further. Now, a rift starts to form between the two once we enter the Seb Ring stage, with rainy conditions selected. This weather state adds puddles to the track, and the fact we have full resolution particle effects means the splashes test each GPU's memory bandwidth, where in fact there's a big bottleneck. It's a great way to stress test the game overall, and with 16 cars in play there's a lot of alpha transparencies to keep frame rates below 60fps, often hitting 50fps and below. Now notably the GTX 750Ti shows a consistent advantage overall, giving us an average frame rate of 54.1, while the R7 360 turns in a lesser average of 50.8. It's a pretty big divide, but of course we wouldn't want to play the game like this. One solution is to drop the game's particle effects to half resolution, which relieves the strain on memory bandwidth. Another solution is to use the game's dynamic mode, essentially adapting the game's visuals on the fly as we play with the engine striving to hold a locked 60fps. It means where there's headroom to use higher resolution effects, for example, it will, but if the frame rate's at risk, it'll dial them back. So returning to the rain-soaked Sabring track, this dynamic mode pretty much does what it says on the tin. Some stuttering remains on each card, and visibly more on the R7 360, where you get some huge frame time spikes. But for the most part, you get away with a full 60fps refresh on each card, where before the GTX 750 Ti and R7 360 each had lurches below 50fps. This dynamic mode is a really great feature, and though alpha effects are visibly lower quality than before, it's a worthwhile trade-off for smooth playback. Now Forza 6 Apex is still in a beta state, and we hope to see some of these hitches, especially on AMD cards, sorted, but overall it's surprising how much we're getting away with on these humble specs. And more than that, it goes to show how scalable Turn 10's engine is. Anyway, that's it for now, do like and subscribe if you found this useful, and until next time, thanks for watching.